it's easy to take daily routines for granted. Getting in and out of a car, opening a door, or even crossing the street. But for some, these simple tasks are more of a chore. Clark County resident Lily Longshore uses pedestrian crosswalks and relies on drivers to exercise safety. Please be patient, please wait, please look at least twice to make sure the crosswalk is, that no one's there. Because um, I've actually had, I've come inches away when it was clear for me to go, I've come inches away with somebody almost hitting me. And it was, I was clear to go and they, they were, I don't know, who knows what they were doing, but they, you know, it wasn't clear. And I, I've, I've met a few people too who have actually been hit in crosswalks. They, thankfully, the particular lady I was talking to wasn't hurt, but it was frightening. I mean, and it, and it was clear to go. And, you know, especially if you are a person who's, well, a disabled person who's wheelchair bound, if I get knocked out of my wheelchair, it's not that easy to get back in, you know? And so it's, it's it just, take the, the five seconds to look a couple of times to make sure, because you can literally save someone's life by doing that. Clark County Public Works is in the process of upgrading traffic signals to improve traffic flow and prevent vehicle and pedestrian accidents. With new technology, the county is able to enhance older style signals. Well, the traffic signals we had in Clark County were a system that was state of the art in 1982 and it was getting to the point where we couldn't get replacement parts for the equipment. So one of the things we started doing about seven years ago is upgrading systematically all of the traffic signals in Clark County. There's about 105 of them. And so we've been going through one corridor at a time and upgrading the systems so that instead of having a signal running out in the street that was basically dumb, it didn't have any information at all. It just took information in from what was happening at the intersection at that time and then reacted to it to having a system that's run on central server downtown where we have a central server application that's talking to the signals once per second and getting information about how every intersection is working. Many traffic signals include updates to accommodate people with disabilities. When a person pushes the button, it says wait. And it will wait until the walk comes up for the crossing. When the walk comes up for a crossing, right now they're programmed to give a rapid fire tick that allows the blind person to hear this and hear the button on the other side to wayfind across the intersection. The button itself actually vibrates, so if the person holds, touches the button and holds the button, when the walk symbol comes up, the button will vibrate in addition to the rapid fire ticking. So that'll help the, the blind pedestrian know that it's time to cross, also the deaf pedestrian. My fingers don't work real well, and so it's hard for me to pr place a, a lot of pressure on buttons. And it used to be you would have to push with five pounds of pressure, and now it's only three pounds of pressure. Um, I know I was told that there's a little spot in the button where if a person um, can't use their hands at all, they can use a stylus with their teeth. Modern signals also include video and radar devices used to detect oncoming vehicles and adjust signal timing more efficiently and safely for traffic flow. Well, this year we're going through a couple of improvements that are gonna be kind of transparent to the public. One of the improvements we're doing is we're putting in a traffic responsive centralized system that's going to monitor the traffic on the freeway and the off ramps here in, in Hazel Dell on I-5. And when the traffic starts having severe congestion because of an incident on I-5, and the traffic starts moving onto the county road system from I-5, the signals will recognize that and do a different time of day pattern to accommodate the traffic automatically. Another thing that's coming this year that's gonna be really helpful for the public is that we are implementing what's called Web.Now. It is a product that allows the public to see real-time congestion information for our arterials. It'll also have information where they can see our pan tilt zoom cameras. They'll be able to watch the video live and they'll also be able to see things like our traffic pavement temperature sensors and other information that we pull back to our own system. The county's goal is to manage traffic signals as an integrated network, not a collection of individual intersections. Ideally, motorists could travel the length of Patton Parkway and get a green light at every signal. Well, next year we're going to be putting in a whole bunch of improvements out in the Orchard Sifton area. The last of the ma major traffic signal optimization projects will be upgrading 30 traffic signals out in the Sifton Orchards okay. area. Um, 
And then the other project we're expecting to start next year is going to be a signal timing evaluation, verification, and enhancement program where we're going to be putting sensors in 56 intersections throughout the county on our major arterials. Those will monitor what the travel time is down the corridors and also how people arrive in relationship to the greens, yellows, and reds 24 hours a day. And we'll be able to go back and make signal timing changes and say, did we make the travel times better or worse? For more information about traffic signal updates in Clark County, visit their website.